the flaming lips yoshimi battles the pink robots mm -hmm. on xfm 104.9 i'm ricky gervais with me is steve merchant and carl pilkington good morning uh i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna own up straight away i've done very little work towards this show this week I'm a bit <laughs> you busy. surprised me yeah yeah so uh, i apologize if it sounds a bit sort of thanks for being honest though Rick. well no i don't you know i don't want people to go oh no, that was a bit shoddy this week i hope it's not gonna be that like every week yeah. So it is because I've done very little preparation. <laughs> okay. So right, you know, whereas well, normally you'll probably have to help me out. All right, you have to do some of the some of the work. Carl, you might have to help us out a little bit as well. I don't know. But I mean, I don't know. Steve's done nothing towards it either. So the onus is on you a little bit here. I love the fact that it's still listed as either Ricky Gervais or Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Mm. In the, you know, Essentially, we don't need to be here, really. No, it, but I know now people listen for Carl. Mm. Uh, everyone I've spoken to, for you know. People on buses, to uh, comedians like Ross Noble mentioned you the other day, and that you know, it, it, they go. Uh, People on buses. I've never been on a bus. You haven't been years. on a bus no. for like twelve years. Yeah. Have you? <laughs> People on buses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. I just know well, the they, idea no. of you being on a bus. Well, the idea of you well, handing over your bus. Fare. They're shouting out from the window. Right. They're going, "I love Carl." Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm walking along. How much is it on the bus? Twenty pence. <laughs> no, come on, seriously. How much is it? Uh, um, what, one, one adult for terminus, please. <laughs> I love the fact you know they do that thing where like if they're interviewing kind what of is it? Paul 50, Newman or someone p? famous. No, it's uh, quid, isn't it? It's always, a quid. They always say how much is a pint of milk, and that's supposed to prove if you're sort of still in touch with your roots or whether you're too big a celebrity. Yeah. You've got no idea how much it costs on the bus. Quid. It's not a quid. One twenty. No, it's not one twenty. Pint of milk, about fifty p. <laughs> Thirty p. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, because well, I mean, it's fascinating because you gave this stuff. I mean, you gave this stuff up before you became a celebrity, didn't what? you? You were you were always lazy. Because people always say to me like, "Oh, um, you know, Ricky seems a bit obnoxious." Who know? says that? Well, no, they say you know. No, they, no. Who comes up to you and just says that? The guy on the tube did it. <laughs> I swear to God, he came up. He said, uh, "He said I was watching an interview with Ricky. He said he's not a nice piece of work." I went, "Well, I mean," he said, "No, I've got friends like that." You know, just and it's like they're always talking. They're a bit irritating, you know. And you sort of let them off because they're your mates. But I was going, well, hang on a minute. He went, well, nah, well, well two things. You know, it's sort of my job talking and mm. being interviewed. Essentially, you do have to talk. <laughs> yeah, so yeah about yourself. If that's his only criticism, then yeah. I'm not too bad. No, he didn't think you were funny either. <laughs> <laughs> He had a, in fact, he had a whole list. <laughs> was it, well, was, I say a list, a petition. It, it wasn't Dickie Anderson, was it? <laughs> it wasn't Rich, Richard Anderson. I hope he's listening. He's our biggest fan. I'll tell you what, Mock Turtles need a remix by Fatboy Slim, don't they? Mock Turtles? It's yeah. a great tune, but I'd love to hear it remixed. Yeah. Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It? Remixed by Slim. Yeah. Yeah, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant, mm -hmm. Carl Pilkington. Ooh, <laughs> stuff, oh, stuff to dear. do. What's going on? Stuff to talk then? about and that. What's been, going, was, on? Uh, What's been going on? Oh, um, before you came in. Oh, you saw it, didn't you? That experiment I was doing with the. <laughs> <laughs> An experiment. Yeah. Well, I, all I know is, as I walked in the building, I passed the little kitchen area. You were hitting Carl on the head with a tin tray. Didn't it make a good noise? It was a great noise. Um, but I interested. To explain more about the experiment. Cause well, I wanted, to, I wanted to see how hard I could hit him and make it resonate, right? Before I either caved his skull in, or right. you know what I mean. So you had to hold it quite loose, okay. so it could like vibrate. But you had to grip it hard enough to give it a good whack. Right. And his head's brilliant for hitting stuff on. He <laughs> is it? it is perfect. Can't, it's like could we recreate that moment a bit later on the radio? You'll notice that you've been on for 15 minutes, you haven't said a word. It's had a bit of an effect on me. Really? <laughs> still, <laughs> still a little bit shaken. Okay. <laughs> oh uh, dear. But yeah, do it again later. We right. were talking about your head a little bit earlier, weren't we? It's not going to mean that you're sort of a bit, you know, fuzzy thinking, is it? Ah, uh, it'll be alright. Yeah. Okay, so. Good. Can we I recreate said, that later, maybe I towards the end of the show? Just hit you on the head with various objects, see which make the best sound? He said, he said, about, uh, said, talking about time out, I said, but, something about in time out, and he went, uh, yeah, do you read that? I went, yeah, yeah, I read it, I get it every week, yeah. He went, uh, there's no point though, is it? He said, because it's like a f telephone directory. You know, if you want to look something up, you look it up, but you'd never sort of browse the telephone directory. And I went, that's an interesting point. He went, although I did. <laughs> When I was in Scotland, I just looked up how many Macs there were, and there was 42 pages of them. <laughs> how bored are you in your hotel room in Scotland to suddenly start working out how many people start with Mac? Did you- were you sat in your room? You, there is nothing else that you can I, think I've of to do. I've been working. It's when we did the show from, you know, XFN did some stuff from Edinburgh. Yeah. 
You were sat in the hotel room. Sat in the room, waiting to sort of go out and get some food and that. Sat there. Why were you waiting to go out and get some food? Because we're all going to meet up. We're going to meet up with you know Simon. So you, you thought I'm not going to switch the TV on. I'm not going to read a the magazine. The telly was on. Nothing was on. I wasn't impressed with anything that was on. So I'm looking <laughs> around the room. I had a couple of the free shortbreads. <laughs> <laughs> He remembers. Yeah. He remembers. He remembers a specific biscuit he yeah. had. Yeah. That's fantastic. I had a couple of them, and then um, looked around. There was a bible, and I thought, well, I know about that. Yeah. There's nothing in that I don't know. So, got the phone book up, and immediately thought, there's a lot of Mac this and Mac that in Scotland. Macintosh. Yeah. Mac Daddies. Macateer. Yeah. There's loads Return of names. So I thought, I wonder how popular it is. Um, <laughs> I wonder just how popular it is. Forty-two pages of Macs. Did you count how many pages they were? Yeah. Did and you did you just work out from the numbers on the bottom of the page, or did you literally no, I count counted? Them? I counted. Right. And, uh, and how many do you reckon are on a page? There's a lot in there. It's quite someone a lot, could tell you approximately how many and sorry, names I, they what, get on one page. How long did it take you this whole procedure? What, what the counting? Yeah. Not, not that long. No, it's, it's just counting two pages. pages yeah. So yeah. It's not yeah. that much. They're all together. And what did you luckily. do once you digested that information? What what did you do with that information? Did I you tell people? I mean, look, how long ago was the Edinburgh Festival? <laughs> Along with the biscuit, I love to get in his head. I imagine it's a big warehouse, and there's l lots of partitions for weird stuff like bo kids born with tentacles yeah, and yeah. things like that. I, th uh, I imagine there's like quite an old care caretaker, and you <laughs> yeah. go in there. You say, "I'm looking for the." He goes, "Hang on, hang on. I know where they. I've, I've put that somewhere. Hang on, that somewhere. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Is hang this on. the one when uh, they shaved the cat? No, it's <laughs> yeah. not shaving the cat. This oh. is the Max. The Max. I know Scotland. The shortbread. <laughs> well, don't don't give me the shortbread because that's putting me off. But um. The, uh, the what's the name though? Do you remember last week I was talking about the airy kid? And uh, <laughs> I think that's every week, Carl. That doesn't narrow it down. All right. Well, we were talking about that airy kid in the woods, and mm. um, did a bit more research this week. Okay. Found a good story out about a monkey. Right. Which I'll uh, told Ricky a little bit about it. Tell me. Come on. Tell it now. No. Right. Oh, no. No. no oh, tease I me with it. keep this. It sounds exciting stuff. That's, right. that's got him. Right. So we'll be doing that. <laughs> we've, we've got, got the audience. <laughs> we've got we've got rockbusters again this week. Okay. Yeah. We've got. Do we need them? Yeah. What, right. are you, what are you trying to get rid of this week? Cockroaches. Right. Uh, good I, one. Can't, looking, I can't think of a reason to keep them. No. Looking into that, well, I, I sort the matter out. That's okay. coming up. <laughs> Excellent. We've got. Um, I'm teaching you some more stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. He phoned me up today. Uh, yesterday it was. He knows we're researching, like educating Ricky. He said, uh, uh, "What do you want to know about?" I don't know. He said, uh, "You're interested in space?" And I went, "Yeah." Yeah. Phones me three hours later. He went, "No, nothing about space." I went, "What?" He said, "I couldn't find anything interesting." I said. You couldn't find anything interesting about space. Yeah. It's big. It's pretty interesting, Carl. He went, it's I went, big, but there's nothing there. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Millennium Dome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, God. so what I'm looking at, right? But uh, no way. He said, is there anything else you want to know about? I went, all right. Uh, I went, anthropology. He went, what's that? I went, study of man. I sent a man. He went, like what? I went, like, our roots from. From caveman through and all the he went and I said Australopithecus, uh, Neanderthal. He went, we well, you know all that then. I went, no. He went, right. He went, don't you want to know how a lung works or something? <laughs> how a lung works? <laughs> and I said, well, tell me how a fridge works. He went, oh, I said it's just the gas, isn't it? I went, brilliant. I went, tell me how a microwave works. He went, I know. I, know. I said, fella walking past in a laboratory with a bar of chocolate in his pocket went past some sort of ray thing. It melted it, and he went, hold on. <laughs> that's it. That's that's it. Explain to me how a microwave works. <laughs> right. So today we're doing uh, sort of medical-ish type things under the banner of um, colon. Then educate me. Oh God! <laughs> Do it again. Colon. Then educate me. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's like, go on then. So, yeah. colon. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's, uh, oh. that's a little heading. You're going to be learning three things sort of medical-ish, uh, yeah. before three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that it? Yeah, do you want to, uh, Pretty much, yeah. A bit of suede. Go on then. How many O'Reilly's are there, do you think? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> it's a little task for you. <laughs> Suede, animal nitrate. That's really got a Johnny Marr influence at the end. That guitar, isn't it? Brilliant. And still, yeah. Still brilliant. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Tell us about this monkey, Carl. You're gonna love this one, Steve. Go right? On. Uh, yeah. So last week we were talking about how, like, a lad left his family because there was problems at home and that. He went and lived in the wood. He got airy. 
Right. Yeah. No, leave it there, Rick. Oh, we haven't got time to go into right, it. Right, so that's what happened, and that's what happened. He lived with the monkeys. He went airy. That's, anyway, what, happened. that's what happened. Looked into uh, some other stuff about like airy kids and all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Came across this story about a bloke, right, who worked in a zoo. Oh dear. Right. So um, troubles brewing. L loving his job and that, but it's, qu it's quite a lonely sort of job because you don't see many people. You're just dealing with animals all the time, right? Mm. So, anyway, well, he gets a bit pally with a monkey because it's the closest thing to to a human. Well, that he appears. Right. Yeah, but you can't really go that close to apes. Is well, it dangerous? What do, you, what do you mean? What type was it? What, do you Just mean it let him tell the story. Was it a chimpanzee? I reckon it was a chimp, yeah. Yeah, it was I a don't chimp. even know. So it was a name. chimp. It was okay. a chimp. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, does so it? So he it's gets pally with him. Right, so he gets pally with what, him. Well, did they go on holiday together? Well, no, I mean, it starts on off. The pool together. Starts off just checking each other out and, uh, you know, probably sharing lunch and that together. Yeah. Right? Anyway, this goes on for a while. Is, uh, you know, they, they're getting on well on that. And then after a while, right, the monkey starts sort of imitating him a bit more and sort of walking upright. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Right? So he thinks, oh, that's a bit weird. Anyway, they get on really better and what have you. So he thinks he could he could live at home with me, this. Yeah. Because we're getting on the storm. Yeah. Right? So he takes him home and before you know Is this the beginning of Beneath the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I think it is. I think you've seen this on video. Well, I, I'm worried, because he's already <laughs> imitating you when they're moving in together. I'm thinking it's maybe a bit like single white female. <laughs> Oh, brilliant! Right, so Go anyway, on. so it's moving in and it's getting used to sort of the, the normal human life. It's having a cup of tea in the morning. Yeah, uh, <laughs> PG tips. As a, <laughs> as a, uh, it finishes the day off with oh, a. Oh dear! Finishes, <laughs> finishes the day off with what? With it does, a, it a doesn't have to move a piano at one point. <laughs> he does he? finishes the day off with a little brandy. Yeah. <laughs> what, he pours himself. A, is he wearing a smoking jacket? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Carl. You, you're listen, a maniac. Listen, mate. no, this is this is why it attracted me. It's amazing, right? <laughs> right. So he's having his brandy and that, loving his life. Um, <laughs> next thing you know, he sort of. Um, I don't know if he loses it or he gets shaved, but the top half of his body is hairless. hairless. Right, apart from his head. Right, so he's right. got a nice. So it's the head. opposite of the kid. Well, no, yeah, this is what well, I'm that, saying. that would happen. Right. Well, hang on, but so you don't know if you he's shaved know. or if. How did it say? Uh, then the the I'll hairless. What? What? I'll bring it in for you, the story, and then you right, can well, see okay, if I've gone wrong. Keep going, keep going. So anyway, so wow. um, so this is going on, and it, 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 he's having a great life. Then the zookeeper starts getting a bit annoyed because. He's having a better life than the zookeeper. The zookeeper's in the zoo. This is such <laughs> so, so the zookeeper's still got to do a day's work. The monkey's at home, he's partying, well, he's got his other Well, it gets to a point when he around. says there's no point you coming in to the zoo, because the whole reason of you being there was because you're being kept there. Right. And he didn't want to bring the memories back, so he said, you stay at home. So you are ju you're talking such Just let him finish. God, I don't know if I can sit here and listen to this drivel. Let me- I, I'm fascinated. It's, near, it's it nearly over amazing. anyway, right? It sounds extraordinary, Carl. So, <laughs> he, he's walking up, right? He's having a tea in the morning, finishing the day off with brandy. Um, <laughs> gets a bit out of hand, only tries it on with the zookeeper's wife. <laughs> Make him go away, Steve. How does he do that? Well, because he's around humans a lot, he becomes a bit of a charmer. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, what, but what is it that he could do to seduce her? Pick fleas out of her? He didn't say. He's but, built. He was built. <laughs> yeah, he was well known. Uh, so what, what about that? Wait, what do you mean, what about it, Carl? It's obviously not true. It's obviously not true. This, this wasn't on the internet. This was in a book. So, it's not a quick joke and just, uh, put it on a website. This is in a book. I don't understand how- the I love that he becomes a charmer. He's got better taste in brandy. <laughs> exactly. And he- oh, that what is- What was it that he was doing that seduced her? I don't know. I th maybe because he was at home more than the zookeeper was. <laughs> but what would he be doing, <laughs> Carl? <laughs> He's not going to be talking with her. They're not going to be playing like, trivia pursuit. Maybe, maybe she liked the silent type. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. He didn't go into that. He just said it, that's when the trouble started. Carl, play a record. All right. <laughs> Is that what Suzanne did when she brought you in? <laughs> <laughs>
my dad had a tape in the car and the tape was always on in the- in the stereo thing in the yeah. car. And I used to sit- sort of- sort of sit through all this stuff I didn't like, but knowing that coming up soon was a song about a- a monster with purple eyes. It a wasn't Puff the Magic Dragon. Eyes. It wasn't- it wasn't that. A monster- there must be something else about it that give people do, a clue. Do you clue. remember a chorus or a few lines? Um, it says something like, it was a one-eyed, it had big eyes, purple, and it eats people or something. The it big eyed purple eater, wasn't there a song called something like that? I, the I, big eyed purple And it was a hit, was, was I'm it? sure there was. A song which is something like the intergalactic purple eater or something like that. It's some like, it's a novelty song. Rubbish. <laughs> what, the, by the Bonzo Dog Yeah, it's that sort of thing, yeah. I'm sure well, it must be Well, if you know what that. car- the, the, the telephones have gone mad! Yeah, well, we'll find out in a bit. I mean, I'm not that bothered, I'm not gonna buy it, it's just that we were talking about songs and that. It'll be good to know who it was, but- Yeah. yeah. Right, well, Rockbusters. Okay, right. now how long- where did you get the phone? Yeah. What, do you want to just answer Well, that? answer the phone, so just answer, answer the phone. Yeah, see what it is. Just see if someone's- Hello? Hello, uh, mate. Alright. Yeah, uh, next song. I don't know if it's by, or is that what you want? Um, that's the bit I want, well, what, really. What's the name of the song? Well, you know that how it goes, it's like, Born night on a Born night a Beep Beep Yeah. Oh, yeah! I d sorry, I don't think you've helped much though. You you can't you can't remember what it's called or who it's by. Well, no, I mean I know the tune, but uh, that's about it. Yeah. But he's it done well. Yeah, but he's done well. He's given up his spare time to call in and sing us a song. Don't diss him. Rick, I'm concerned he's just only marginally remembering it more than Carl is. It was actually in um, I think it was in the Blob. No, it was in in, in something like the Blob actually. I think Steve McQueen was driving away and it was it, it, running in a secret. This uh, is so very familiar. See if it, thanks very much, mate. See if we can get a title off someone. Uh, and R X F M. Hello, uh, yeah, I know the name of that tune. Go on. Uh, it's the, what is it, the Purple Eyed People Eater? Yeah, that sounds about right. And really? Who's it by? Yeah, well, I'll just, I'm just at work and, uh... Who is it, it by? It came to my mind. Do you know who it's by? I don't know who it's by, mate, sorry. This is not enough information. I wouldn't phone in we if I didn't ask the Lewis, but we asked him just what the tune was. But I want someone like Paul Gambaccini to call in. He knows what, you know, what chart well, okay, position it got okay, to. Okay, okay, right. Well, right. Thanks I, very I don't much, think this is enough information. Well, That's well, two people. The thing We've is, barely got if any you know the title, we can put it in the internet, can't we, and find out who did it. Yeah. That's full of Brilliant. information. Brilliant. Well, thank, thank you very much yeah, for calling I, I don't know why they bothered, frankly. Right, listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, so Rick, I, No, I mean, I just think if you're gonna bother to call in a radio station, you have the facts. You have so all the facts, do you have? Well, he hasn't got the facts and he runs the radio station. He doesn't run it, they keep him here like a mascot. He's like a pet, isn't he? They have him running around the office. God. Now listen, um, it's Rockbusters, I've got the, uh, the prizes here. Rick, I'll be honest with you, I mean, we've given away some, some shoddy stuff in the past. This but is the worst collection. Tight, is it? This is really scraping the bottom of the barrel, Carl. I mean, the, the, on the how many more mad. of these if can you, we give uh, away? If, you, if you're still phoning, hang up, because we're, we're not gonna bother anymore. We're really sorry about that. Maybe email us or something. How many uh, of these can we give away, Rick? Look at that. It's only Only Fools and Horses, the, the, the It's videos. the Christmas special from not this year, the year before. <laughs> yeah! I mean, we have given away so many of these. <laughs> I imagine there's charity shops <laughs> throughout London. <laughs> throwing them away. Yeah, throwing them away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we got oh that, that dear. and I, you know, if you didn't watch it, you know, if you weren't it one of the uh, 20 green, million that watched blue it. Blue eyed, fat legged, purple eater people, <laughs> if they had a big, and it had a big boo. It's something like that. Uh, and once again, the best chill out album ever. With, uh, I mean, it's pretty much rubbish. <laughs> it was a big boo boo. Actually, no, the songs were okay, but. Purple eater. It's just basically a collection of songs you might have heard on adverts, <laughs> so enjoy that. Oh god, this one again, the best air guitar album in the world, <laughs> volume two. This, this is no longer an entertainment show. I, this is three people chatting to each other now and again. Sometimes we remember it's going out, sometimes we just take a call for our own amusement. I, I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the same place again. It, it's the David Attenborough um, uh, compilation <laughs> of DVDs, which I'd be very surprised if it actually makes it to you. I imagine someone here will have had that long before he posted. <laughs> oh dear! There's a T-shirt in here. XFM one hundred four point nine. You get sent a lot of uh, crap t-shirts. Just in case you what you're listening to. You're and listening this is, uh, to. This is a what Quicksilver is that? T-shirt. What is that? Fine. What T-shirt is That's that? That's a T-shirt made by the Quicksilver people. So if you're a bit of a surfer dude, and by the look of the size of it, you're a midget. <laughs> <laughs> you can't then say, you're, would you? You're welcome to it. And this is, I think, the uh, piece de resistance, Rick. I what? mean, because you know the kind of fans we have. They're pretty cool cats. 
guides, free yeah. groovy guides. Yeah, yeah. So I imagine they'll be loving on DVD <laughs> Doctor Who, the Aztecs. That's one of William Hartnell, the first Doctor's uh, classic episodes oh, on DVD. God. There. Um, oh, you know, um, um, rubbish. That's rubbish, Carl. Those prizes. Yeah, yeah. I'm ashamed to give them away. Carl, frankly. you know our mate Johnny. He's a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Do you remember? Um, he bought um, uh, the Doctor Who magazine, um, and uh, he went um, to the toilet, and Steve got post notes and put geek on every page. And Johnny opened it on the tube, right, and it had geek and everything. And Johnny bought in the, the new Doctor Who magazine, I think this week's or this month's, right? And they've, they've, um, they've done the perfect Doctor Who fan, right, what the geek is, right, and it looks exactly like Steve. Alright, don't have a go, really. It does. And, went, and I, I've, it, I, I'm gonna try and put it on the website. It's amazing. It's got your hair, glasses, it stands <laughs> like you, it's sort of dressed like you, and it's only, and it's, it's hilarious, and he's, he's, he was, I mean, I'm insulting you now, it's, it sounds like an insult, but, if you'd see it, you'd laugh. Player. Well, Rockbusters, right? Yeah. Alright, here we go. Just a little um, bit annoyed. Just, uh, three th clues. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we lost all the energy in this show, haven't we? Well, I'm just, I can't get over that insult. I'm just a little No, three. we did, though. It just came out of nowhere. I can't believe it. It just three came clues. out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting an insult. No, and, uh, but I think there was a sense of camaraderie on this. No, like, just email in, in, in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm just annoyed. I can't, I can't do this. I'm just, I'm just reading out the clues. Should we put this, let's put this one in for the Sony Award. Let's put this show in for the Sony Award. Play a song, Carl, because I need to discuss things with him. I've talked before about in Edit it down. Get this down to three minutes. It'd be a great show. Busters in a minute. XFM. Lonesome Day by Bruce Springsteen from uh, his new album The Rising on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Former just phoned in and said uh, to Carl, uh, stick up for yourself, don't listen to that merchant, he does my head in, he's so arrogant. I don't think I'm arrogant, I think I'm mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think I'm sort of objectionable, I don't think it's arrogance, I think no. it's sort of nastiness. Yeah. I'm just not a very nice person. <laughs> <laughs> but believe me, I'm not arrogant, I think I'm pathetic. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of emails, um, s saying, could you bring back White Van Carl? Oh, yeah. Which is that section of the show where we ask the questions that the Sun asks Someone else. random punters. Yeah. Uh, of Carl, but sadly recently they've got very politicised and very kind of, uh, basically a little bit depressing. So, uh, there's not really anything appropriate, but I have trawled the papers looking for other questions posed in other sections of the, uh, the Sun. Good idea. Uh, I was just looking here at the Dear Deirdre section, which is the sort of problem page. Uh, I don't know what your views are, oh, on, are on this. Oh, I'd love to see Carl. Oh, God, can we get him a job? That's Just negative. ask, oh my God, that would be amazing. Right? Well, here's one. I'd like to see uh, your view on this, Carl. I'm a happily married 42-year-old woman with four kids, yet I've developed a huge crush on pop star Darius Dinesh. Yeah. It sent my hormone levels through the roof, yeah. and last night I woke my husband up at 4am for sex. We've been married for 20 years and he can't believe his luck. Recently I've been having- I wanna- you... sorry, I wanna go to a- I'll stop you there, why are you telling me? <laughs> uh, do... Right, carry on, sorry. Recently, I've been having erotic thoughts about Darius, morning, sure. noon and night. Yeah. I haven't felt like this since I was a teenager and mad about Donny Osmond. <laughs> My husband is amazed at the change in me. We had sex twice last night and again this morning. Again? Uh, why are you telling me this? <laughs> yeah, go on. He's just boasting. This is not a problem. <laughs> it's yeah. not a problem What's here. the problem? No problem, just wanted to tell someone. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. I watched Darius on TV last night and when my husband came home I dragged him into the kitchen and we made mad passionate love. Right, they've done it- they did it then, twice last night, once this morning, that's four times. Uh, five to five times she's mentioned it so far. Yeah. Um, she's doing alright. Uh, my husband- this is- this is a great bit. My husband thinks it might be his new moustache. <laughs> <laughs> or that I'm going through the menopause, but you I know You were thinking different. of growing a moustache? I was thinking of growing a moustache. You think it would change your luck with the ladies? I love the idea, that's what he thinks it is. He's telling his mates in the pub. You, you should, should grow one of these. Grow the old Tom right? Selleck. Five times in the last <laughs> 20, 24 <laughs> exactly. hours. Hooray yeah. for sexy Darius. So, um, what do you make of that then? What, uh, what are your views on that? Well, Hold on, though. If that bloke is reading that paper, that <laughs> narrows it down it's a bit. It's got to be, yeah. Uh, who else uh, d does he know? But His wife he... likes Darius, he's had sex five times that night, <laughs> and he grew a new moustache. <laughs> he's thinking, I wonder if that's- I wonder if that's <laughs> me. Maureen. Yeah, go on. But what's your concern? Cause she- I'll tell you what her problem is, she's worried that, um, you know, the reason that she's now kind of overly excited and she's, you know, having this great sex with her husband is because she's actually fantasising about someone completely different, younger. She's having these wayward thoughts, isn't- she's a bit concerned about that. What's well, your concern- what, what- what are your thoughts? I reckon she's gonna start shoplifting soon and coming out and not flushes. <laughs> go on. I just, um, they're both happy, aren't they? He's getting what he wants. Uh -huh. She's happy, I'd say, yeah, whatever, get on with it. Do you think that she- Brilliant. she should confess? Um, She wants to be honest with him. 
I, I wouldn't, because not, not that many fellas like Darius. Right. So, <laughs> if, if you're sort of thinking, oh, she'd rather have him than me, I don't What do you think Darius win. would think of this? Uh, he'd, he'd probably be happy with that. I mean, if, what if, you do if you, there, What if would you do if you lot got loads of phone calls, right, from, yeah. um, women going, no. Carl, whenever you're on the radio, I just have to do it. I just have to do it. Your voice makes me... I'd say, all right, well, you know, it's all right. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. <laughs> would you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, just in case anyone is doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do to sort of like egg them on a little bit to help them out? What do you think- What sexy what, things would you say? What do you think is your quality? What do you think people would find, you know, pretty horny about you? Is it your sort of mank wine, do you think? that? Like, just, just say this. London shit, innit? Oh, that, I, I think- I say that, but, you know, London, it's not that good, is it? Like, oh! I think you've done it there. So. So that's Say something of... quite sort of sexy though. Say something like, you know. Well. I love to love you. Say well, something sexy. Say that. No, yeah, say yeah, something no, sexy. Susan says to me, you know, do you love me? I go, yeah, you're alright. <laughs> uh, uh, the thing done. is, I know that's true. Yeah. I know that's true. That, so. That's brilliant. But because one of the things that Deirdre says is that she's she's wondering if uh, this marriage is going a little bit stale and needs to be freshened up. They need to give a new spice, a new spin to the marriage. What would you do? What would you advice would you give to spice up? You know something. They've been married for quite some time. Get him, get him. I think get Darius. All Darius things. Get David Snedden's new video <laughs> on the telly. Uh, what do you reckon though, Carl? Just mm. just treat him. Do you know what I mean? Just surprise him now and again with stuff. That's what oh. I do. It's what you, you've got those condoms, didn't you? That you got two. So hang on, what you've never done that? What you've surprised Suzanne with? What? You know, I've like uh... <laughs> you stood behind the door and shouted at her. <laughs> she comes yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some, no, some Don't drop the jelly. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just just the usual stuff. There was some free chocolate delivered to work the other day. I took her a bit of that home. Nice of you. That's really thoughtful. She didn't like dark chocolate, but I said, well, it's a thought. <laughs> so I had it. I had it. But um, you know, you often benefit <laughs> from any gift that you give yeah. her. The chocolate, uh, the meal, the condoms. You're yeah. Always, there's always something in it for you. Yeah, there is. I love the idea. She's so got bored with a Christmas present now, though. <laughs> what the condoms? Yeah. Or the food that she ate. No, they, they condoms. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, she's, she's got tired of filling them with water and throwing them at <laughs> the passing kids or putting them on her head and inflating them. I love the idea of asking problems. What do you think of, uh, erectile problems? You know that Pele advert, he goes, be careful, we haven't got erectile problems, call this number. What would you do if you're impotent? What would you do? What's the advertising? <laughs> just saying, like, you know, if you can't, you know. I haven't seen that. Yeah, Why have yeah. they got him doing it? <laughs> well, well, he used okay. to, you know, he used to be able to keep it up for hours, <laughs> the ball, and they... Yeah. yeah. What do you do if you- To advertise that? No, if you suddenly couldn't get, you know, what do you I do? I don't think it'd bother me now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you're 30! <laughs> What's <laughs> wrong with you? are talking like you're an 80 year old. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you sort of been there, done that now. <laughs> it's like the boxing and the dancing that I did. It was good as a kid, so now it's like, you know, take Play it or leave it. Play it, Rick, God! Play it, Rick, God! Play it, Supergrass, seeing the light, XFM 104.9. Um, we're a little bit worried. We might have a technical hitch here. We've had no emails, and usually we get loads and loads. Um, so we're worried it's us. Can someone send an email? Uh, well. Yeah, just a test email. Yeah, but we won't know if they have or not. They might just be ignoring us. No one might be listening, Steve, so this isn't proof. I, I guarantee there's at least one person who would send an email. Maybe if Dickie Anderson's listening, he could do it for us. Anders! Anders! Do us a favour for all the pleasure we've given you over the last few years. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. If you haven't heard the Rockbusters, might as well give them out. Well, let's check the emails working before we do yeah, it. Yeah, otherwise it's a complete- yeah. this- this whole show has been a sham and a farce and a waste of time. Well, I think they can take that as red. <laughs> <laughs> right, educate me, Carl. Right, well, uh, Go on, to say, right. educate me. Well, what we uh, what we're looking at this week, we've we've done war, we've done. Um, we've nailed we done? that. We've nailed war. Did um. We did summed up war with a little French bloke whose battle cry was "John's got a moustache." Right. So, and last week we did science. What would you do on science then? Off airy kid. Brilliant. Right. Yeah. So this week we're looking at uh, medical problems. I'm sure we do airy kid every week. Mm. Um, medical problems. Then I've got I've got a couple of things under the banner of. Uh, Colon, then educate me. Yeah. Uh, we've got, um, this is interesting, right? Do you yeah. know if you have a, an operation on your brain, 
Right, what yeah. they do is, the- I mean, this is why I'd never go to the doctors. I don't like doctors because this sort of stuff freaks me out, right? They can operate on your brain and what they do is, they put you to sleep first, cut your brain case open. <laughs> <laughs> your skull, yeah. The, the yeah. brain case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then wake you up and operate on you. So you sat there with your head open. Yeah. Messing with your brain and you well, don't no, feel anything. Well, there's no nerve endings, is there, in the brain? But still, it's not right, is it? <laughs> what, do you think they do it for fun? No, they but- go, go on, Reggie, wake him up so he looks freaked out. Go well, on, is, it, is, it, is it necessary that you're awake, do you think, or- Well, they need the brain active, don't they? Yeah, but it is when you're asleep, you're having mad dreams. I had a mad dream the other day. Go on. No, I might tell you about it later, but there's no sense to it. But, so your brain's still- your brain's <laughs> still- okay. this conversation. Yeah, I mean, it'll turn out, I'll go, no, Carl, I was there, that wasn't a dream. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but- <laughs> So, I mean, if I had an operation- On your brain, heaven forbid. Well, <laughs> operation anywhere, I'd like to sort of think, well, I'll have an injection, I'll go asleep, but when I wake up, it'll all be sorted. Yeah. yeah. The fact that- your brain the case is open. Open, and they wake you up and you think, oh, is it all done? They say, well, have a look in the mirror. And you- and your yeah, brain- See, I don't think they do that. I don't think they try and frighten you when you're doing an uh, operation. Yeah, I don't think that like, you go about your business and they sort of follow you around, dabbling. Yeah. No, but it's almost like they are having a bit of a laugh with you. Right, well, I'd just like to say now that they don't. Anyone who's going in for an operation on their head, uh, do not ever listen to anything but Carl wh says. Wh why have you got to be awake? Because you'll be bored anyway, you'll be sat there. They'll well, they, they give you a out. telephone directory look and they say, look how many Macs are in there. We've, that's the Scottish telephone directory. And, you know, time flies when you're counting <laughs> that sort of thing. No, but do you know, like, when you- What when are you- what are you telling me? What are I'm you asking me? I'm just saying how weird it is. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, do you know when you go for a haircut, <laughs> right? It's a bit embarrassing. Well, I don't anymore, but when you go for a haircut, it used to be a When bit you go for a haircut. It used to be a bit embarrassing when, like, they'd wet your hair and they'd make you have that sort of- Hitler cut because your hair's wet and I used to hate it and I think do you have to do that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know it's what I mean, similar. It's you? very similar to uh, open um, skull no, surgery. What I'm saying yeah. is, it's almost like barbers like to do that to make you look daft and feel daft for a bit. And there's women coming in and out, and you're sat there with a daft haircut. Yeah. And this is what that reminds me of. Do you think that? Do you think they do it in a shop window? This brain operation? I'm just saying, it's a bit. Weird. Do you think? Go, Why are we doing it in John Lewis's? Just so more people. I love the idea that that's what doctors are doing. <laughs> Let's <laughs> make this guy look a bit stupid. Yeah. Open his brain. Look case. at the twatty look for this brain <laughs> out <laughs> of his head. Take a Polaroid, Reg. Take yeah, a take Polaroid. Polaroid. Look at him. Look, 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 <laughs> at, look, at, look at his face. Right, look, right. Clock his face when I give him the mirror. Get this on camera. Put Carl this fake nose and glasses. Sorry, on. is that? Did you teach me something then? Was well, that education? I taught you that your brain, your brain case can be open when you're awake, and you just sat there, sort of letting them get on with it. Brilliant. I've learned that. I'll never forget that. Right. Go on. Anything else? You'll love- let's play a song cause the next one is amazing. <laughs> what, even more amazing than that? Yeah. Play a song? Yeah, bit of Bowie? No email still, by the way. No, I don't think it's working. It's not either. working today, Lady so Stardust. We'll, gonna, we'll have to do a phone in for Rockbusters. Off Blimey. the Ziggy Stardust album. Alright. Bit of David Bowie? When's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon, then. Educate me. Right, so, um... I've learnt that you can, you know, fiddle around with your brain when awake. That's brilliant. I've never been a fan of Doctors, though, so this was a good one for me to, yeah. to look up, cos... Yeah. Did I tell you the time... When, uh, the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die. Alright, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, must have been about fifteen, right? And, uh, at lunchtime there was this- we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have, um, like a- like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or, there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So, um, she used to like bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because, you know, they, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate 
and eat a load Brilliant. Yep. Scavenger, eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really- it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays, but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out- I mean, it used to be a chocker. Yeah, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, <laughs> have a cake. <laughs> the headmaster crawling <laughs> through, <laughs> fighting the kids off. <laughs> right, so I'd have like, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good- good afternoon, really, right? So, you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven, uh, jam donuts, a few congress tarts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Start. Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. If anyone maybe... can get a Congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd, once, yeah. twice a week, you'd have a load of cake. <laughs> in your life, yeah. yeah a so normal anyway. day in your life. Uh, were, were the frog boys there with the, with the <laughs> webbed hands and the big heads? So, and the horse in the set uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Right. Yeah. I was like in agony, could yeah. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh. <laughs> You could hardly <laughs> stagger to the free cakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is. I can't yeah. walk. He gets the doctor around. Uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My man was panicking. Sure. He went. My dad came in from work. She said, oh, something's really bad with Carl. I think it's serious. It's, you know, the doctor's only got long left. So he said, what? He said that and just left. So she said, yeah. So I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, Carl, I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she yeah, didn't go into detail. No, 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 well, I, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't, she I, no, doesn't no, like no, talking. I'm, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yes. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? I had about six cream grounds. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, yeah. well, I'm not gonna probe him, he's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in, hi honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's gonna die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why, uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So, right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on short then. story, so. Right, uh, <laughs> old woman, about seventy years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff, nothing wrong with her, she's having a good life. And, uh, one day, she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out, cause she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says, take your clothes off and that. So, she does. And, uh, checks her out, says, yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, oh god. He says, you got a, a tumour on your buttock. Right? So she goes, oh. What, can you do anything to sort it out? So they go, yeah, 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 we could book you in for an operation, it's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward I, I, you. I'm, I'm not, honest. Right. I'm, no, I'm, listen. Okay, no, 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 serious. Right, okay, Carl. I'm telling you now. I'm leaving. I'm no. never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly. You're talking. I, I, I've never had any such. But you are. Play a record. Play a record. <laughs> I can't believe it. it. What do you mean you can't believe it? Stop, stop the record. Stop the record. Stop the record. Right, okay, right, what do you mean you couldn't believe it? No, when I read it, I said, I've got to tell Richard This that. woman had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years, you mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. Syntax, Pry, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, right, get off. Right, what you got next? Right, well, uh, running a bit late with this, but it's time for, uh, do we need them? We're, we're looking into what I'm really worried about this, cos th everyone's getting that last clue wrong. I reckon it's so rubbish that even your mental fans can't work it out. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one, but... Give that final rockbusters clue again. The Jamaican fella, uh, had to have some aspirin. Why is that? Why, why did he have to do it? No, FD. Hold on, that's changed. <laughs> well, you can, I mean, it doesn't matter. The story oh, it doesn't matter. Right. That's the point of a cryptic clue, isn't it? Oh, do, do. What have you got now? 
Right, so we, we're looking into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails, I've spoke to someone about jellyfish and that, and uh, looking at cockroaches today. Right, now who's the expert? Um, it's a woman called uh, Jessica Marshall. Right. Does she know that you're going to play this on the radio? Well, I called up, right, in the week and said, can I talk to someone about Just cockroaches? And she was like, is that Carl? She knows who you are. Yeah. Right, so she already knows maybe your angle, your approach. Yeah, she was And uh, she, she is an expert, she's just not, not just some random person. No, she works in a museum, where, a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's the one near Knightsbridge, it's got dinosaurs and that in it, it's worth seeing. And that's the history museum? Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> not sure. <laughs> He's not sure. <laughs> this is Go what on. happened. Now, what I'll do, I'll tell you as much as, as I know, and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong, and then at the end of it we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. All right, so, uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, that I found out is that, um, that they have 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects, so they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia. That's sort of classic human knees and every other animal knee. So with six legs, you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double-jointed? Cover I, I traps. think you're grasping at straws or something. Like All right, well, uh, well, we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for 40 minutes. Well, they don't do that because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body, so, um, no. If They're not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got the mouth shut, they might... Be able to slide. Nothing to do with breathing. So just feeding. So you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something, and it got bored after forty <laughs> Again, minutes and said, "Well, we'll call it right." That's a unkind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all. You can't do that. Yeah, but. No, pretty unkind thing to do anything to anything, even a cockroach. Something else I found out. Yeah. They can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't bleep to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had 18 knees, you seemed a bit sort of, like, don't don't talk ridiculous. But yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Ah. Uh, so, so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah? Yes. Why, when it was invented, has it got that facility? Say if someone said to humans, we could do that with humans, and, you know, if you lose your head in some accident, it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your, to your family and maybe write them, write them a note, you won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying it was my own fault and uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well that I would be a useful facility, I agree, but cockroaches are great survivors, I mean they've been around for over 300 million years, they're one of the most primitive insects. Alright, well I've also, um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently they can sort of rest for 75% of the time. Yeah, they just just sit about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. Well, I mean, maybe maybe the twenty five uh, percent that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make probably up. Probably searching out food, and uh, yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge, and they'll become very very quiet. You might think they're dead. Yeah, but, but I'm sure you know if, if we were sat in a fridge, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we? You know. I, well, uh, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... Not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with, with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So, cockroaches, can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them then? I would say so, yes.
I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally, really. Because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, I think you should be more concerned about your sources, which I've been trying to tell you for a year, right? The fact, I mean, I mean, 18 knees, where did you get that from? It was, uh, it was on uh, the internet. Uh, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what you read and take on. Mad world, don't it? <laughs> right. The cure, obviously. Yeah. Some. Right, Carl's been taking phone calls for these clues. <laughs> right, and so everyone's been saying the same thing for the last one. He's been going, no, no, and I'm worried. I'm always worried. FD. I just overheard him on the call. They're going, ah! <gasps> What have I been saying? Oh, no, it's FP. <laughs> Dickhead. Right, give me the clues out. It's a rollover. Right, tell people, that's, we're really sorry to anyone who would have got that right. Okay, right, do the clues quickly. Tell them, it'll be a rollover, so we have to do three new ones. Do you not write these you down, You such a t I don't, I don't write the answers down in case Ricky looks over the thing and sees the answer. Why would I cheat? I'd rather you do something right with your life. Right, well, the clues were I've got three other jumpers like this one. Yeah. That was FT. Yeah. They got that. Four tops. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Good. Well done. That bunch of people can't make up their minds if they'd want to sit in the sun or not. That was C. They were getting that. That was charlatans. Charlatan. Right? A bunch of them. Charlatans. Right? What? 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 Do <laughs> what's, Char what's Charlie? No. No. Sh it's like, shall I go out? Shall we? Charla. Charlatans. They got it. Right? <laughs> Where I went wrong with this one, uh, the Jamaican fella, he had to have some aspirin, why? Um, it's my fault, you know, I'm not, I'm not cutting, there's no point passing the book or anything. Um, I said FD, a lot of people were saying, uh, Fred Durst, like, f four Ed Ertz, which is a good <laughs> one. Yeah, which would have been as good as any of yours. But I made an error, so we'll roll it over. No, 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 what is the answer? We'll roll, we'll roll well, the what point is the answer? answer? Jamaican fella what? Add some aspirin, why do that? What's the, what's the thing? FP. FP, it was Frida Payne. <laughs> Frida Payne? Frida Payne. Frida Payne. Frida Payne. That's awful. Carl, Frida You've got to write these down next yeah, week. This oh, is well, I'm, right. I'm sorry, you are, right. Uh, you're I've, the producer. Been, I know, I know, but I've had a busy week, haven't I? That's Just doing not stuff an excuse. That isn't an excuse. Our excuse is we don't. We have. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. You, you do put care. the work in and you, then make a mistake. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's better not to try than try your hardest and be rubbish. <laughs> do you see what the point? We've got. We don't care. But you've got standards. Yeah. And, and you're, you're not meeting them. You're for- think of that! You're not even reaching your standards. <laughs> God! <laughs> right, uh, well that's that I guess. Well, the prizes will be, uh, giving those away next Bollocks week. Bollocks again. Uh, Just and, completely- uh, Song for the ladies to end the show with. It's from Nick Cave's new album, Nocturama. This is a track called He Wants You. Back next week. Remember, free to pain. <laughs>